When I first took a serious look at astrology, I could see that it had enormous potential to reveal a deeper understanding of how the universe works. I saw that it is a scheme of understanding that must have accumulated valuable insights from hundreds of intuitive astrologers over thousands of years. When I tried it out, I found that it works, not just in some vague way implied by some weak conjectures about how and why it works, but with great precision. I also saw that the zodiac would be the key to unlocking the real how and why. A quantum leap of understanding was staring me in the face, and not just for astrology. It would open a window on a theory of everything, the holy grail of physics. However, it would not be a materialist grail, because it would also include an understanding of consciousness and metaphysics. It would be the all-encompassing understanding I call epiphysics. That vision, which I intuited over 30 years ago, has since been realised. Making it real was not an easy task. It took more than 20 years for me to find the how and why, which I did in 2013. When first looking into astrology, I already had many years of experience and research under my belt in physics, emotional healing and metaphysics, long before it became fashionable to use the word quantum in metaphysical circles, I saw the quantum connection in astrology. To those who are fond of using that word, I say this, you will not find validation in quantum physics. It doesn't prove what you might think it proves. It is a materialistic perspective on the physical manifestations of the fact that life is the fundamental nature of the universe. To seek to understand metaphysics in terms of quantum physics is to put the material cart before the living horse. Key attributes of quantum physics were a huge clue that enabled me to see the potential of astrology, but the answers I found are an explanation of quantum phenomena, not the other way around. We can see that life is more fundamental than quantum physics if we look past the mathematical complexities of wave functions to a simplifying insight. Whenever we make an observation, what we observe decides one state of being from many which previously seemed possible. That is an indication that consciousness and choices are more fundamental than material things. It is not, however, a proof. Dyed-in-the-wool materialists will always argue that quantum physics doesn't rely on a conscious observer, and that argument is valid. Nevertheless, their position is wrong. Quantum physics strongly suggests a conscious universe. It is just that we cannot use materialist theories to prove immaterial realities. What we require is a real proof, which must necessarily reside in the immaterial realm of rationality and logic. The ontological mathematics people have such a proof although they have made a fundamental error which distorts their picture of the universe somewhat. I plan a future video about that, but first I need to be absolutely sure that my own proof is completely watertight. For now, we are going to explore the consequences of a universe made of the essences of life, that is to say, of yin and yang, or as I like to call them, knowingness and creative will. Please pay attention to the animation that is playing. In it we see a depiction of the tropical zodiac and the way the sun moves through it throughout the year. It is defined not by an arbitrary arrangement of stars and constellations, but by the intersection of two planes, 
the ecliptic plane and the equatorial plane. These planes are defined by the two ways in which the Earth is rotating. That is to say, the Earth's orbit around the solar centre and its spin around its own axis. This picture was the clue that enabled me to see the potential in astrology. The red triangle depicts an exchange of angular momentum, or in quantum terms, spin, between the two rotations of the Earth. As the shape of the triangle changes, the amount of the exchange changes. So what the animation shows is that there is a wave of exchanging spin mapped out around the zodiac. It is a wave of twisting force, which is called torque in physics. In quantum physics, spin distinguishes quantum states. So what we see is a clue. We see a wave of torque that links changes in quantum states to astrological essences. This clue eventually led me to my discovery of the correlation between physics and the zodiac in 2013. In the second of this series, I will go into that in depth. Before I was able to crack the puzzle, however, I needed to drill down to a more fundamental understanding of the essences of the zodiac. That is what this video is about. As I pointed out above, quantum physics strongly suggests that the universe is alive, that it is made of yin and yang. To be more precise, it exists within and is made of the two reciprocal perspectives on the essence of life, knowingness and creative will. I have already revealed how the four elements, fire, earth, air and water, arise out of yin and yang in my two videos about the four elements. We can see in this animation from the second of those videos that the elements arise not just from yin and yang, but also from how yin and yang change as the cycle of the elements progresses. This only happens in the context of exchanges of spin happening over time. In other words, as a feature of planetary masses moving around a zodiac and perhaps in some other spin exchange process. Seeking to go up a level in complexity, we could hypothesize that a zodiac is made from the four elements. But then there is an issue of the modes, cardinal, fixed and mutable, to be explained. In traditional astrology, the scheme looks like this. There are twelve signs, with each sign being a unique combination of an element and a mode. So there are three signs of each element and four signs of each mode. For example, Aries is cardinal fire, Leo is fixed fire, and Sagittarius is mutable fire. Continuing the pattern, Capricorn is cardinal earth, Taurus is fixed earth, and Virgo is mutable earth, etc. When mapped out around the wheel of the zodiac, the scheme looks like this. The obvious puzzle here is that if the zodiac is made of the four elements, why are there only 12 signs? There are 16 ways to combine two of the four elements, which might lead one to expect a scheme like this. Another way to articulate this puzzle is to ask what are the modes and why are there only three of them? The hypothesis I developed to explain this puzzle is that the zodiac is indeed made of two levels of the four elements. However, the signs made from two layers of the same element are hiding. I conceived of the zodiac as a sequence that works by translating deep superconscious knowledge into consciously known knowledge via an interaction between the two layers of elements. I thought of the signs as being relationships between deep elements and a surface element. So, for example, 
Aries might be fire of earth, meaning that it represented fiery choosing on a surface level, and what it was choosing was to bring into conscious awareness a deeper level of earthy reality. This made sense because Aries is the sign of self-determination, which is about asserting oneself in ways that change one's reality. Exploring this concept for all the signs, the scheme I came up with was this. I found it to be the only scheme based on two levels of elements that makes sense, and the sense that it makes contains an explanation of what the modes are, why there are only three of them, and thus why there are twelve signs of the zodiac instead of sixteen. Notice that in this scheme there are no doubled elements, no earth of earth, air of air, water of water, or fire of fire. The explanation for that is that with those signs there is no translation required between the deep and surface element because they are already the same. This implies that there are in fact 16 signs and there is another mode which I will call instant, because the translation of an element into itself is instant, it requires no time, and thus no space for a planet passing around the zodiac to traverse. If we examine this scheme, we see that in all the fixed signs, the surface element is three elements away from the deep element. So, for example, Leo is fire of water, and to move around the cycle of elements from fire to water requires passing through not just fire, but also earth and air. This brings in a kind of inertia to the translation process that explains the fixed nature of the signs. The mutable signs have less inertia because their elements are opposite each other in the cycle. The cardinal signs are more dynamic because their surface element, being the preceding element in the cycle, naturally gives rise to the deep element. So, for example, Aries, being fire at Earth, is naturally dynamic because fiery choices result in earthy realities. Notice that from fixed through mutable to cardinal, the modes have been getting more dynamic. The most dynamic mode is instant. Thus we discover that the instant signs are hiding in the cusps of the fixed signs, taking up no space or perhaps only a smidgen. At the cusp of Taurus, we find the earth of earth instant sign. At the cusp of Leo, we find the fire of fire instant sign. At the cusp of Scorpio, we find the water of water instant sign. And at the cusp of Aquarius, we find the air of air instant sign. This scheme represented only a hypothesis before I found the physical correlation of the zodiac in 2013. It made a lot of sense, and intuitively I knew it was correct, but it had to wait for the physics to be tested. It makes several predictions about the physical correlation, which would provide powerful validation if found to be correct, or prove it to be wrong if found to be incorrect. This scheme solves the puzzle of why there are only 12 spatial signs, and what the modes are, but it creates several new puzzles. When contemplated, many questions arise about the scheme. Firstly, what is the relationship between the two levels of elements? I have been referring to it by using the word of, but that says nothing about an actual physical relationship between the two waves. Secondly, we can see that the surface level contains three cycles of elements, whereas the deep level has only one. 
So the physics would have to answer the question, why is the frequency of the surface wave three times that of the deep wave? Thirdly, we see that the deep cycle is in reverse. It doesn't go fire, earth, air, water. Starting at the cusp of the real first sign, Leo, it goes water, air, earth, fire. That was a mathematical puzzle because a wave cannot be made to reverse by changing its frequency or phase. Fourthly, there is the question of how the instant signs are hiding in the cusps of the fixed signs. Then finally, there is the fact that the deep cycle doesn't align with the equinoxes and solstices. In the traditional scheme of the zodiac, Aries, the traditional first sign, starts at the spring equinox. The next cardinal sign, Cancer, starts at the summer solstice. The next cardinal sign, Libra, starts at the autumnal equinox. The final cardinal sign, Capricorn, starts at the winter solstice. If we add these key points in the year to the double cycle scheme like this, we see that the deep level cycle is out of alignment with the equinoxes and solstices by 30 degrees. This was an extremely knotty puzzle for me for many years. In the next video, we will see that all these five puzzles were resolved and found to exactly match the physical correlation when I found it. For now I want to leave you with a picture of the power of this scheme, of how it represents a literal quantum leap in understanding of the zodiac. If we take the start of the zodiacal cycle as an example, we can see that it provides an explanation of why the first sign Leo manifests as it does. I plan a series of future videos explaining why each sign manifests as it does in depth. Also, this scheme explains what is going on in the zodiacal cycle as a whole, and the signs cannot be properly understood without taking into account their position and role as part of the whole cycle. For now though, let's have a brief look at the role of Leo. Why is it so creative, dramatic, uplifting, loving and sovereign? Leo is preceded by the first instant sign, double fire. This represents pure creative will, arising at a deep, more collective level. So Leo inherits its creations from that double sign. The fact that the deep cycle is reversed, or in astrological terminology retrograde, means that this deep superconscious cycle travels backwards in time to meet us. As we proceed around the zodiac, our surface conscious level elements gradually process this retrograde knowing until it is completely known at the end of Cancer. Leo represents the first stage of that translation process. It is the process of tuning into a creative will deeper than our personal will, to the will of life we are coming to know. The essence of Leo shows us how to do that. One might call it tuning in to the sovereign will of God. Leo's essence is fire of water, so it is about choosing to feel the deeper knowing that has been offered via instant fire. Fiery actions based on that knowing are dramatic and uplifting. This tells us a lot about love. It is about choosing to be guided by the felt knowing in our hearts. That is all for now. Thank you for your attention.